morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. This is uh, the last Bazaar Morning Call this week. Uh, tomorrow, of course, is uh, a market holiday. Uh, I'm Prashant. With me, my colleague Sonia and Nigel. We're coming to you from the CNBC TV 18 Motorola Swal Studios. Guys, hi. Morning. Hi, good morning. When you said the last Bazaar morning <laughs> call, I got scared. I was wondering what happened. But then I realized there's a big nice long, long weekend. Nice long weekend awaiting nice us. Nice long weekend awaiting us. But there's a nice long day before that as well. Oh. And there's a day that perhaps belongs to TCS, considering that, you know, the commentary was um, yeah. quite concerning, uh, given that it's in any case, these stocks have fallen so much. So I guess that's going to be center stage today. Absolutely. And we'll talk about TCS uh, in a bit from now. Let me just quickly uh, sort of begin with where we left off last night, which is, of course, the U.S market. So, you know, the big data point we were all waiting for was the US CPI number, the inflation number, which uh, came in, which decelerated enough, uh, much actually below what the consensus was expecting. Uh, but the way we left off things in the US market session uh, is uh, almost as if the markets were wondering what next, right? I mean, so inflation numbers have come off, but not enough to kind of uh, signal a clear way forward. Uh, so what now? I think, uh, you know, the S&P was lower, the Nasdaq was down, uh, but you also had, for example, the dollar index, which sold off about 0.62 or percent. We're closer to 101 as compared to 102 or 103. So those are the changes that we saw. Uh, after the CPI numbers, we had this FOMC minutes as well. This is the last meeting. Now, again, nothing very, nothing very new. I mean, not very revealing in that, in that sense. Uh, the one thing which I think people were disappointed with is there was no discussion. The minutes did not show that there was any discussion about rate cuts. Remember, markets are pricing in very aggressive, some 90, 100 basis points worth of Fed rate cuts in the second half of this year. In the minutes, there was nothing. There was, you know, discussion about how to pl uh, plans to save banks, financial sector, but nothing on rate cuts. And I think that did not go down very well. Fed officials and regional Fed presidents did speak after the CPI number. And uh, they acknowledged that inflation is coming off, etc. But they said that there is perhaps a long way to go before uh, the job is done. So I think uh, this is the mix which left markets kind of scratching their heads, wondering what next really should we watch out for. There is more data. There is always more data. There is a PPI number uh, and a few other things which we will uh, keep getting. Here in India, the inflation number has uh, come off very sharply as well. So in line with expectations, it now stands at 5.6 compared to 6.4 in the month of Fed. These are year-on-year -year inflation changes. Much of it was uh, largely because of the base impact, base effect, but there was also indication that the core component is also starting to decelerate a little bit. This is important because the RBI did a U-turn, a hard U-turn by not hiking rates at the last meeting. And this gives credence, this number gives more confidence that maybe when they meet next in the month of June, uh, there will be another pause as well. Because they made it very clear, we're just pausing for this meeting and we will watch data to decide on what we want to do next. So this is good in that sense. Uh, TCS numbers are weaker than expected. But uh, if you look at, if the, are there sort of down rates to F524, F525 earnings ex expectations? There aren't. I mean, you know, 1%, 2%, 2.5%, these are not large. Stocks move on the back of what happens to consensus earnings expectations, and we are not, we've not seen very large uh, earning cuts to uh, sort of uh, those uh, expectations going forward. Uh, just a quick word on the market. The Nifty has managed to close above the earlier high of 17,800. So yesterday was the eighth session that the market rose, and we have cr we've surpassed the last swing high of 17,800. The resistance is now at the 50% retracement of the entire fall from 18887. That number uh, is, uh, is uh, stands at uh, 18, se uh, sorry, uh, 17858. Uh, uh, that was a bit of a head spinner. 17858, beg your pardon, that's an error. 17858 is not very far away, just about 30, 40 odd points away from where we are. And uh, Above the 17858 uh, number, we could be looking at a push higher to the 18,100 level, which is the 61.8% retracement. So just two numbers, 17858 uh, and then 18,100, the 50% and the 61.8% retracement of the fall from the all-time highs. Uh, the 40-day exponential moving average is uh, 17,464, and that's the support. That should be the support on the way lower. On the Bank Nifty, we've managed to close above the 50% retracement of the entire fall. The next resistance for the Bank Nifty comes in uh, in a band, largely, between 41,671 and 42,036. 42,036 is the 61.8% retracement of the entire fall. I mean, you know, the way the markets have come up very, very nicely in a very strong way, 
going into the end of the week. Uh, eight days on a trot, the market has done very well. And of course, getting into the thick of the earnings season. Uh, you know, we were saying this yesterday, uh, that maybe uh, time to take the foot off the pedal a little bit, but let the market tell you what it wants to do. Maybe it's got more steam left in it. And I think uh, we'll find out as the day uh, kicks off. The SGX is indicative of a 20-point flat kind of a start. Sonia. Oh, absolutely. And I think after eight days, we were looking for a reason for the market to perhaps pause. And yeah. maybe TCS could be that reason, right? Because the commentary was very weak and it could take the entire IT sector down with it just for today. In the near future, of course, time will tell. But uh, it was concerning for me the way TCS spoke. Mostly the fact that, you know, a lot of these uh, discretionary projects are now being put on hold because of the global banking turmoil. They're saying that clients are pausing ongoing projects temporarily because of the uh, banking issue globally. And uh, not just that, the sentiment has weakened both in Feb as well as in March. So a lot of brokerages have scaled down their estimates as well. CLSA put out a note where they're saying that the near-term uncertainties will definitely weigh on the stock. We, of course, await more commentary from the management in a bit. But in the interim, I think the entire sector could be under pressure because of the commentary from TCS. Global markets were also subdued overnight, so no major Major cues coming in. The Dow was a tad bit in the red. The S&P 500 was down about 0.4%. Uh, Prashant was speaking about the local queue, which is the uh, inflation data, which was good. And now the expectation is that the RBI is unlikely to hike rates in the month of June. Uh, for our own markets, eight days running, the market has ended in the green. The good part is that FIs continue to buy. And yesterday, there was a large FIA figure. FIs bought over 1,900 crores. And this is uh, the largest single-day FIA figure that we've seen since 8th of March. So the money is coming in thick and fast. But uh, once again, getting back to IT, you have Infosys earnings that come out later in the evening. And after what TCS has said, perhaps, you know, a lot of these companies could be on the back foot. In any case, our poll is throwing up a constant currency growth of just 0.4%, which could be the slowest revenue growth that Infosys has seen since the COVID time, since Q1 of FY21. So in that context, there's some caution and, of course, the commentary from TCS as well. But given take everything, this market has now, you know, uh, gained 5% from the lows we saw in March. It has significant gains under its belt. So maybe some pause because we're heading into a long weekend. We have big banking earnings uh, this weekend as well. Yeah and weak earnings from TCS. Well, if you take the lows of March, Sonia, and the high that we saw yesterday, it was a thousand point swing on the Nifty itself. Yeah. So we've seen a big rally from the recent lows. But in, with regard to trade setup today, the first half of trade, well, it'll belong to the tech stocks because TCS will react and the other ID stocks as well will react. While the second half could belong to the banking names and even Infosys will be in focus because TCS, Infosys, as well as HDFC Bank, they're going to be in focus on numbers and they have closed on 20% weight on the Nifty itself. The buy on dip strategy, though, will continue till that 17,500 odd mark is violated and it's weekly expiry that will play out. So expect a volatility as well to pick up on that front. Now, I'll say that Infosys's numbers are going to be a little bit more important uh, than TCS. And I say that because it has far higher weightage on the index. It's on the Nifty. From the Nifty perspective, Infosys will be important. The second factor is it's been an underperformer. Just look at that chart. Year to date, Infosys, well, it's been an underperformer out there. And point number three is expectations are very, very uh, subdued out there. Expecting a 0.4% growth, which is the slowest we've seen all the way since quarter one FY21. Short point is Infosys numbers are going to be important. Expectations are rather muted on that one. What are the FIs doing the FNO market? Well, it's become quite uh, uh, a norm to see now. They're covering shots and they're adding long positioning. And just in two weeks from the start of this series, take a look at the swing. Short positioning is down from 92%. It's come down to around 65%. The net short positions as well, just take a look at the swing out there. It's a 1 lakh contract swing. You know, at the start of this series, they were at around 1.4 lakh contracts on net short side. That's come down to around 42,000 contracts. So what a big swing we have seen out there. Long positions have got added and short positioning has come down. On index options, yes, they're buying some puts out there. But the encouraging part is they continue writing more puts than calls. So that's a positive. And two strikes yesterday when focused in an uptrending market. 17,800, 17,750 put. Between them, more than a crore shares were added out there. So let's get straight to the levels then. 17,500, 17,550, the 50 and the 200 DMA. Crucial to hold that on the upside. All eyes on the 100 DMA. Can we get to that mark? And on the Nifty Bank, well, there was some writing yesterday being seen at around the 41,400 put as well. So that's giving you the near-term support for the Nifty Bank. 41,250, extremely important. And on the upside, we're looking at the 100 DMA. SGX Nifty is indicating a bit of a pullback, which will not be such a bad thing. I'm expecting this dip to get bought 
at some point of time. Okay, so perhaps a pause at the start of trade and all eyes will be on the commentary that comes in from TCS. But first up, let's tell you what we have on the equity front. Sanjeev Prasad of Kota Constitutional Equities expects the markets to stay muted in the near term despite the surprise pause by the RBI and market valuations becoming more reasonable after a large time correction over the past two years. He notes a few headwinds like growth prospects remaining weak, inflation facing upside risks and earnings downgrade risks exist, especially in the consumer discretionary and outsourcing sectors. In his view, bottom-up valuations do not price potential risks adequately in the case of more sectors. Money market views. Parul Mithil Sena, Standard Chartered says USD INR is traded in a narrow range as the impact of dollar weakness and range-bound oil prices was offset by US dollar purchases by PSU banks. She expects the pair to trade in a range of between 81.7 to 82.3 for the week uh, post uh, lower than expected CPI print out of the US. On the bonds, Parul Mithil Sinha says domestic yields moved lower last week post the surprise pause by the MPC. She says with lower than expected inflation reading from the US and India, she sees a sustained rally in bonds with the 10-year bond yield likely to trade in a range of 7.1 to 7.2% for the week. She says while their research team still expects terminal rate hikes by the FOMC, the India MPC is likely to stay on a prolonged pause on rates. Well, we've given you the money and as well as the equity uh, market calls. But let's uh, get a little bit micro and tell you the stocks that we're going to be focusing in our special top 10 segment. We're looking at 